In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a new month. Today is Friday, the 1st of July, 2022. It is Friday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year C. We thank God for bringing us to this new month. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Amba Njume. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Amos, chapter 8, verses 4 to 6 and verses 9 to 12. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 119. The response to the psalm is, Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. I read from the gospel. At that time, as Jesus passed on, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he sat at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a doctor, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is The church should open her doors for sinners and not rather shut it against them. The church should open her doors for sinners and not rather shut it against them. Good people of God, ours is a society that is very quick to condemn sinners, to laugh at them, to provoke them, to stigmatize them and ostracize them away from the community. Ours is a community where the strong are praised and the weak are laughed at. I remember back in the secondary school days, those who were top of the class were called out and praised 
and those who were the last of the class were called out and shamed and mocked. Consequently, we have grown into that habit of trying to hide our weaknesses because we fear being laughed at. We fear being provoked, being stigmatized, and being ostracized. It is not uncommon in homes to find children after committing a crime hiding it away from their parents. Do you know why? They have grown to know that those who speak out and bring out their weaknesses are beaten. But those whose weaknesses are not known are considered to be the good ones. So they are no longer truthful. They hide their weaknesses because they do not want to be beaten. They do not want to be expelled and stigmatized. In our colleges, those who are weak are expelled. Those whose weaknesses are known are thrown out. Imagine a scenario where a student is pregnant and she comes to school with the pregnancy, she's expelled. But do we know how many became pregnant but aborted? But they come to school because we do not find pregnancy, we think that they are the good ones. How we fail to realize that the one who decided to keep the pregnancy is even very courageous and very good and should be welcomed and helped to grow. Rather, we push them away, ostracize them, stigmatize them, and they seemingly good because they appear to be are those who are considered the good ones. This germ has fast entered into our churches. There are many of our Christians who are denied Holy Communion, and rightly so, because their sins are known. But in that very church, there are many others who commit even worse sins, but they join the queue for communion time. This has made many whose sins were known to begin to hide them, to pretend because they also wanted to join the queue for communion. Now who are we helping? Rather than Christians identifying their weaknesses and coming so that they can be helped, they now try to pretend because our society has made us know that the good ones are those who at least show they are. They have no weaknesses. While those whose weaknesses are known are stigmatized. How often in our churches we point fingers at others who are sinners who make an attempt to come to church. We scare them. We try to send them away. We make statements such as, do you want to come find waiting for church? <laughs> but where should they go to? Jesus came for sinners. And the truth is, there is none of us who is righteous. We are all sinners. The Pharisees who were complaining that Jesus was eating with tax collectors and sinners, were they any better? Not at all. You and I know how worse they were. They were hypocrites. But it was easy for them to cast a stone at Matthew and at Jesus because he kept their company. Jesus gives us a wonderful approach today. And that approach is to welcome sinners, not to condone, but to make them know that it is good to accept their weaknesses so that they may grow. We should rather be open with our weaknesses so as to be helped. But when we castigate sinners, we make them hide their weaknesses. I tell you, if parents change their approach and method that whoever speaks the truth is not beaten, children will be open to tell you the truth always. But because when they speak the truth, they are beaten, that explains why they try to hide the truth. We should rather make them realize that we are all weak. And in accepting our weaknesses, we grow. Do you go to the hospital and lie to the doctor about what is troubling you? Then you will not be helped. You will not feel better. No one goes to the hospital with a stomach ache and tells the doctor it is the foot that is spinning. If you shame about you are sick, you no go well. But society makes us to be ashamed of our weaknesses, and so how can we be helped? Jesus did not stigmatize Peter after Peter had denied him thrice. Rather, Jesus gave Peter another opportunity to become better. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Jesus did not stigmatize Judas. No, it was rather Judas, for fear of what society would have made of his act, he went and hung himself. And truly, dear friends, 
Many have feared what society may say, how society may treat them, and I tell you, many have committed suicide. We have sent many away from our churches because they fear how we may look at them. When we broadcast the sins of others, when we talk about it, beloved, we scare sinners away. Mind you, Jesus is not saying that we should condone sin or try to cover them up. No, but in making the sinner see their weaknesses, not to laugh at them, not to stigmatize them, they are open for correction and for growth. When Jesus met Matthew, the tax collector, he did not say to him, you tax collector, you thief. No, he said, follow me. And in following him, Matthew saw that he could become better. That Matthew, the tax collector, became a saint. We are reading the gospel according to Matthew because Jesus gave him an opportunity. The Pharisees who were scolding at him missed their opportunity to become saints. The same is true of Zacchaeus. The same is true of the woman caught in adultery. Jesus did not say, get up, you prostitute. No. He said, go. I will not stone you. Go and sin no more. That opportunity made the woman realize her mistake and she became better. Dear good people of God, this is what Jesus challenges us to do. Let us not scare sinners away. The church should open its doors for sinners because Jesus came for them. And so the question he asks in today's gospel is very apt. Who needs a doctor? The sick or the well? Who needs to go to church? The righteous or the sinner? And the truth is, we who cast stones are even worse sinners. We are ourselves sinners, beloved. Do not cast a stone on another. Do not talk about your weaknesses to scare them, to stigmatize them. Rather, let us use this approach of Jesus. Make the sinner see their mistake. Make them see where they have gone wrong. Make them feel remorse for it and let them see the need to become better. But if we stigmatize them and push them away, they rather become hardened. There are two fears. What if, in trying to welcome them, they see it as an opportunity, a laissez passe to go on committing evil? Does not the Bible in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 24, say, Do not spare the rod and spoil the child? We should be hard on them. The second fear is, what if in trying to associate with them, we are also contaminated because there is a temptation that it is easy to copy evil than to copy good. But in his approach, Jesus wants us to know that he is not condoning evil. We should cast off the evil, not the sinner. The sinner, the person has a dignity and a respect that we should always give, but cast off the sin. But many times, dear friends, we cast off both sin and sinner. We laugh at them, forgetting that they have a dignity. You laughing at that sinner, were your own faults to be made public, I tell you, you may even realize you are worse off. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Matthew that we become like him to see our weaknesses. Jesus gives us an opportunity. He calls us each one like he did to Matthew. He invites us to see our weaknesses, not to glory in them, but to see our need for change. What is that thing that keeps you away from the church? What is that thing that you do that you know offends God? He doesn't stigmatize you, but he wants you to see that it is wrong and how can you come out of it? Matthew tells us today, every sinner has a bright future of becoming a saint and every saint has a dirty past. Put your dirty past behind you and accept this new beginning that Christ gives you. You can become a saint if you forget about your yesterday and decide to become a better you. No one should cast a stone for we are all sinners. Not even the church. Rather, the church should open its doors for sinners because Christ came for sinners and not for the righteous. It is the sick that need the doctor and not the well. Let the church continue its pastoral ministry and pay emphasis on the weak, not on the strong. For indeed, who is even strong? Who is even righteous? We are all sinners. We are all broken. And therefore, let us not cast any sinner away but give them an opportunity to see their weaknesses and therefore accept a room for possible conversion. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a happy new month and for all of you celebrating anniversaries of whatever kind, 
We say congratulations and we join you with our prayers. Please, parents, teachers, administrators, the church, do not cast off any sinner. Do not stigmatize them and laugh at them. Rather, make them able to welcome their weaknesses, see their need of change, and therefore grow to become greater saints. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <music>